Welcome to the third edition of Beyond the Journey podcast. My name is Dennis Bacon, and I have John with me today. Hey, Dennis. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing well. Good, Good. to see you. Do you have any idea what we want to talk about today? I think I do. I think I do. Okay. I think we're going to talk a little bit about uh, this idea of this journey, this beyond okay. the journey that our mm-hmm. clients uh, navigate with us. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that process that uh, we take our clients through that gets them started on that journey and uh, someday helps them achieve their goals. So okay. that's, the, that's the goal for today. When you talk about process, what are you talking about? Well, that's a great question. So really what we're talking about is the idea of figuring out where they're at today, mm-hmm. maybe help them dial in a little bit about where they want to go someday in the future, and then all the steps along the way. So oftentimes that's maybe referred to as a financial plan or planning. Those are some words that are mm-hmm. used, as you know, in yep. our industry mm-hmm. a lot. Uh, but I think I think all of that takes on kind of its own unique um, flavor as it relates to how we work with our clients. So really the goal of today is to dive into that process, the, the planning process as such, and really kind of unpack what does it mean to start and move through the journey uh, when they work with uh, okay. one of our advisors? Good. Well, one of the things I know that I've had a lot of people come to me and say, I don't even know how, how I have to start. <laughs> and uh, I haven't started because it's too much work. Uh, the reality is the work isn't really on the participant's part. That's it, right. Really, the work is on our part. That's right. Uh, and often people say, well, I just have to do all this stuff to get ready. The reality is to get ready to do a financial plan, you need to come in, and we need to understand what your financial picture looks like right now, hmm. which really is last year's tax return. <laughs> That's most of it. Most of us have one of those. If you don't, maybe we have other issues. Um, the uh, other thing we need to do is we need to see copies of all your investment statements. We like to see the statements because it gives us a lot of information that you don't mm-hmm. even realize is there. Uh, just how you've saved, how you like to invest, gives us a lot of information on what you've done in the past because most people, mm-hmm. you know, what they've done in the past they've been comfortable with or they've been unhappy with, one of the two, and it lets us get an idea of where they are there. Uh, during that process, we also want to uh, get any other assets that they have, whether they have vacation property, they have, uh, maybe they have stock option plans at work, uh, there could be an ESOP at work, all types of those, those sure. type of things. There are different types of financial uh, aspects of their life. And uh, if they get all of those things to come in, which it, it's not as cumbersome as what you think it is, because we get those things automatically every quarter or every year or every sure. month. And uh, if once we have those, we begin to unpack what needs to be done from a planning standpoint. The other thing that, that is the most hard thing to, to do uh, is uh, the hardest thing is, is for them to come in and tell us where they want to go. <laughs> uh, I often find people, uh, they, they're, they're either bewildered about where they want to be, they're <clears throat> so fearful about them not having planned well enough that they're afraid to open the door. Right. Kind of like going into a dark house with no lights on. They're right. afraid to open the door because they're afraid they'll trip over something. And what we find out is if you walk into your house at night when the lights aren't working, even though you've walked in there a thousand times, you're afraid that something's in there that you don't know about. <laughs> and that's a lot of people, the way they are, people are right. in their financial plans. Uh, so what we do is we turn the light switch on. And when, once you turn the light switch on, you can walk through your house you're not afraid of anything, you know, so mm-hmm. you're going to walk in. Well, that's what our role is. That's what a financial plan is. It's the light that we shed on things you already know that are there, but it puts them in perspective. Mm. And so those are the, those, that's the core of financial planning. It's pretty simple. Right. You know, yeah. Now, yeah. There are some people who have a lower complexities, though. Absolutely. Now, simple to us, perhaps, but they come in, like you said, not maybe knowing where to start. Now, you just use the word core. And uh, that's a great acronym for something that I like to think about, and that is challenges, opportunities, relationships, and either expectations or experiences. Right. And so in yep. having an initial conversation with people, you know, what are some of the challenges that they came to the table with that day? You know, they came in for a reason. Mm-hmm. Oftentimes we just start by asking them, What's, what, what brought you here today? What, what is it that is causing you concern mm-hmm. or is a challenge in your life? But the fun part is to talk about what opportunities exist. What are the things Mm -hmm. that they'd like to take advantage of? Or maybe that they'd like to see 
accomplished in their life or their family's life that, that they're just not sure quite how to get there yet. Right. Talk a little bit about the people they care about the most, those key relationships, mm -hmm. their, their family, their friends, their businesses, if they're business mm -hmm. owners, and really dive into who are the people that they want to take care of? Who do they want to bless? Who do they want to prepare for through this planning process? Because mm -hmm. as we've talked many times, it's really about a journey. And there's a lot of people along that journey that they're going to impact one way or the other. Mm -hmm. And then the last, the E really is expectations or experiences. And I know you've had, you, you've walked a lot of clients through a lot of different experiences they've had, mm -hmm. good and bad, mm -hmm. with financial <laughs> decisions that they've yeah. made. How do those experiences and maybe their expectations impact how you start this planning process, it, how they how they begin down this journey of planning for their future? Well, anytime you, you, you we all have a life experience. We have walked, we have went through situations where the economy has been bad and we've lost mm. money or the economy <clears throat> has been great and we've made money. Uh, we have had life circumstances happen to us. Uh, sometimes we've just walked in because of lack of knowledge, been so fearful. Right. And so I think really what, once we have collected this information and we have kind of delved into a little bit who they are and what their life situation is, the goal then is to really be able to, as I use the word unpack again, <laughs> to kind of unpack exactly what's caused them to feel the way that they do. If they're fearful, we need to work through that and be patient with them. It mm. may take a few years mm. to get them to where they need to be because of fear factor. That right. often happens, but we want to try to let them understand experientially with what we're doing, maybe on a smaller basis, and then move them forward. Other people come in with no fear whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe they should have a little, maybe they've accumulated all they need. Their biggest risk is that the year 2007, 8, and 9 hit the day after they retire. Right. And they're, they're invested in such a way that they have no protection. Hmm. You know, and so it depends on the situations and where they are and how they have managed up to that point. That's why it's so important we understand how they got to where they are. Right. And so that process of kind of getting there and really understanding where they're at um, requires a lot of organization. And mm -hmm. we have some great tools that we use to help mm -hmm. us kind of organize the data, I guess, the, mm -hmm. the hard data, the hard facts. And we use a lot of checklists and different things to make mm -hmm. sure that the clients bring in the things that are really important to their situation. How does having good organized data impact the, the, their ability to kind of begin to understand maybe where they're at today and, and where they're going? Well, it gives them a confidence that we have covered most of the bases they need to cover to start mm -hmm. with. The other thing it does that's more important than understanding you today is as life goes along, as I talk about financial plans, I've said this for years, I, my, my first brochure I ever did <laughs> was uh, back 20 years ago, where it said financial planning is a dynamic process. Mm. Financial planning is not a plan, it's a process. Right. And over the course of time, your life changes, financial circumstances change, the world changes, hmm. uh, and the whole economic environment may be upside down you know, at different points. We've all experienced, if you've been around for a while in investing, you've all, we've all experienced that. And so the planning process gives us a tool hmm. that when you have cir circumstances change or you have desires that you want that are different than what they were a few years ago. I always use the example of the couple who retires and they, walk, they come into me after two years of retirement and says, hey, we want to buy a $140,000 <laughs> motorhome. And I'm looking at their plan going, Oh, really? <laughs> you know, maybe that wouldn't be a good idea. We, su right. we suggest they go rent one for a summer and sure. then and make then, sure and they make really, sure they really like want one because that because they'll only get 80,000 when they sell it. So, right. you know, um, but, uh, you know, it helps us look at that. And sometimes we have clients come in and says, I want to spend one hundred thousand mm dollars -hmm. I hadn't planned on. And you go. OK, that's OK. Yeah. Go I think it. I've heard you tell at least a number of clients they're not having enough fun. Yeah, that's one of, and, my, one of my favorite lines, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and usually that means that through the planning process, you've identified that the goals that they want to accomplish, the things that are important to them, they have extra dollars available. But they right. wouldn't have known that had they not gone through the steps of really unpacking, as you said, right. um, all the things that they mm -hmm. really care about. Um, so you know, I, know I think about it in terms of 
um, sometimes we talk about a puzzle, right? And, and whenever you do a puzzle, there's usually a, a cover, there's the box, mm -hmm. and on the, on the cover of the box is the picture of the puzzle you're putting together. But oftentimes, people, clients come in and they don't even know what they want the picture on the box right. to look like, yeah. right? Yeah. But they have a scattered bunch of pieces out on the table, <laughs> and they're like, here, paint us a picture. What should this look like? Mm -hmm. and, and really, our job is to kind of dig into all those things and then really have some hard conversations sometimes around what should that picture on the box look like? Yeah. So when you're sitting down with someone, you've got, you've got all the hard data, right? You've got, mm -hmm. you've got the numbers. You've got the statements. How do you, how's that process look to really figure out what it is they really care about? Oh, I've been doing it long enough. It kind of seems pretty simple to me. <laughs> <laughs> we, because we have such good technology on being able to do that, it really is us going through putting all this data in and questioning in front of them. We do it right in front of the client after mm -hmm. we've got the data in. We'll come back and review it and make modifications and changes to the plan. But some of the biggest challenges we have in that is when we get more complex situations. Right. Um, and uh, if you have business owners, for instance, uh, you know, business owners they have a, a whole they have a they have a whole other family. Mm -hmm. That's that's the that's the people at work. That means the retirement plan they may or may not have in their business. Uh, it's the uh, the impact of that, the valuation of that and uh, unpacking all that and the tax ramifications of the, of the business owner. Uh, so there's a lot of things out there as you kind of walk through the process and find out. Some are more complex, some are more simple. Uh, the typical family that's been working for someone for years and uh, or kind of accumulated their net worth and they're getting ready to retire, uh, that's really more like flipping the light on you know, and, and shining the light on. You get into more complex situations. Like I said, business owner's a good example. Um, Doctors who, mm -hmm. you know, they, they could all of a sudden have a disability and not be able to practice any longer. Right. That wouldn't stop them in most of their life. You know, we have, we, I think both of you, we won't talk right. about, we have, both of us know, have a friend who was in a Absolutely. major car accident and uh, was a surgeon, but yet after some time of recovery, even though of a major disability, he's able to still take right. care of his, his practice. But uh, that's unusual. That usually doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. He had a great drive that allowed him to do that. But, um, as you go through and, and the business owners and stuff, because of all the risks that they have, and like I said, doctors are one, you have other people have end up with high net worth, their planning process is, is a little different, a little bit more complex. So it's very important that we understand what that looks like. That's great. And so I know we've talked before about this, this idea of being along a journey, and mm -hmm. there's some different steps along that journey. And and being able to educate our clients is a really important step. Getting them organized so that they're in a position that they know what they have, <laughs> kind of know where they're at, know where they're going. Yeah. And then the, the, the third piece is really preparing them to make decisions. So when you think about kind of the, the back end of the planning process, so now you've completed um, our hard work of really kind mm -hmm. of, of taking everything and putting it together. That process of really preparing them to make life important decisions that are I'm going to change the way that maybe they um, interact with their wealth and interact with their family. Um, how, do, how does that allow you to have those conversations? Well, once they kind of feel like you have all their information and you understand who they are, they're really more willing to listen to you. Mm. And they're really more willing to, if you do it, in an empathetic mm. way, mm. for lack of a better way, you know, you do it as if you're sitting on the side of the table. You've with earned them. trust. Yeah, you've it, earned it, yeah, right. Yeah, you've earned trust, and you're and you want to now. You kind of want to take their hand and walk them down that mm -hmm. journey, so they can see where they are and give them less right. trepidation about the decisions that they're making. Right. Because that the the, the major decisions in life are really stressful. Mm. I mean, you have. You have marriage is pretty stressful. <laughs> but the, the point of making a decision, I'm not talking about the whole marriage itself. Well, it could be. But, <laughs> the, uh, but uh, you also have uh, deaths of parents, obviously death of a child, which mm. is horrible. Uh, but one of the top ones is retirement. Mm. It is actually one of the most stressful events in life mm. because you're going from going to work 40 hours a week or more and uh, and having somebody else tell you what to do in many cases, 
And uh, even though you may be also supervising other people, <laughs> somebody is somebody's determining what your day looks like. Right. And uh, even if you're a business owner, somebody's determining what your day looks like to going to where you have nobody determining what your day looks like. Hmm. And if you haven't planned for that, hmm. it's, it's stressful. Right. I've had many, many people quit and go back to work because quit retirement. I know that sounds, that's an oxymoron, right? Quit retirement. But, uh, you know, they've quit retirement to go back to work because they really just didn't know what they needed to do. And we try to help them understand that. That's sure. part of the prep process for retirement. You know, I often find that, that being prepared to make those decisions and well-thought-out decisions not only gives people a peace of mind with the process mm -hmm. that they're going through and they can really feel good about the decisions they're making, but it's also a confidence. And I think people really truly want to feel confident that the decisions they're making that are going to impact their, their, not only their own life, but their loved ones and the ones they care about the most, that they're making the right decision. And I think mm -hmm. oftentimes our clients are scared probably of making the wrong decision more often than they are um, whether or not they make the right decision. Right. And yeah. so through that planning process, they really can have the confidence and a peace of mind that really comes from knowing that they have a plan in place. And well, actually, my goal is a little different for them. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> my goal is for them to be excited about retirement. Not just confidence, and th but I want well, them to be excited about it. 100%. I want them to be excited about yeah, it. You know, and, and excited about what the next, the next portion of their journey looks mm -hmm. like. Because we all have a journey in life, and we want them to be able mm -hmm. to, with great expectation, move to that next mm -hmm. phase. Whether it's playing more with the grandkids, mm -hmm. spending more time at the lake, going on a great vacation, right. doing something philanthropic or missional. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. we want to be able to have them look forward to that and get them in that planning process where they're really planning their life, not worrying about the finances. Right. So really you know. going beyond well. That's an interesting concept. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should use that. We should use that. We should use that. Use yeah. that. All right. <laughs> and with that, thanks for watching episode three of Beyond the Journey. And I'm John Kleber. And I'm Dennis Bacon. Have Thank a great you. day. Thank you very much.